All right, what's this thing here? It's Record Store Day, the big long video, Record Time with Chris, episode 37. So every year, for the second year in a row, we have been making these pr special prints to give away at Bull Moose, and this year's was made by a former staff member in our Portsmouth store who is now a, a famous illustrator, artist, and her name is Shan Murphy, and if you you can get one of these if you get to uh, Bull Moose early enough on Record Store Day. And uh, if you have ever been to our Portsmouth Bull Moose, you're going to see lots and lots of details in here that will remind you of uh, what it's actually like in there. She did a great job. Real excited. That, real excited about this. And... Uh, Everybody knows, uh, some people know anyway, this guy who had, uh, sort of coordinated the whole thing and talked to her about it. So, hey, thank you. We're psyched about that. But, uh, let's jump right into showing you some of the releases. And I have them organized in a certain way. There is a little pattern to the way I'm going to go through the early chunk of them. And uh, guess down in the comments if you can uh, figure out how I'm doing it. And I guess I'll pick somebody at random and send them some interesting, I don't know, cool record or something like that. But, um, uh, you know, it's real expensive to ship stuff out of the U.S., so I'm going to be totally, uh, um, well, anyway, don't want to ship to some, well, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, All right? Hey, let's look at the stuff. So, 10 inch here, right? All right, Sublime. Hang on a second. Oh, it opens at the top. That's why I can't show it to you. Anyhow, um, this is their first demo. It is, I think, the first time on vinyl. Pretty sure it is. Feels heavy, like 180 gram vinyl, black vinyl. And here are the labels. And you also get a nice, like, uh, you know, there's a nice black and white insert on glossy paper there. Enjoy that. One next thing. All right, Duck Baker. This is uh, all unreleased stuff by him. Uh, from There's some uh, demos from 1973 and then like outtakes from later on in his career, 79. It's all um, kind of, uh, you know, finger style. Uh, black vinyl. Great essay on the back explain, from, the, from him talking about all his, uh, you know, his journey and how all this stuff got made. And, about being approached by the label to come up with this stuff and why it all had existed. Next thing, another 70s record, Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive, 12 inch here. Black vinyl again, but we've got um, nice uh, pink and labels there. B-side is the uh, is substitute. Both of these are the 12 inch versions, so maybe you don't have those in your collection, or maybe you do. Moving right along, Def Leppard. This is another EP. It's a uh, track listing from the back. Live at Abbey Road Studios, black vinyl. But uh, it's on, check out the name of the label, Bludgeon Riffola Records. I like that. Come on, come on, rock on and rock it are the songs. Okay, now, Evanescence. Let's look at the Evanescence record. Okay, here we are. This is like a B-Sides compilation and a couple tracks on here uh, were available on vinyl or have only been made available on vinyl in the box set that came out last year. Uh, October, November, December, sometime like that. There's a, here's the back cover with kind of a different take on the smoky thing on the front. We've got a nice Printed inner sleeve with lyrics on it, and it's transparent blue vinyl. Ella Fitzgerald. This is a live album, Ella at Zardes. It's a two LP set, and these are the very first recordings that she made for Verve. It was right before she did her first album for Verve. She's actually introduced at the beginning of this by none other than um, Norman Granz, who was the founder of Verve. He actually set Verve up for her. Uh, we have a, uh, again, a nice four color 
nice color insert. Um, that's no gatefold, just to get, but you get two records. Each set from the evening is on one record. And here we have blue vinyl, opaque this time. And the other record is pink vinyl. There we are. Okay, moving on. Got some clear vinyl for you. Here we have Super Chunk, the two song acoustic seven inch. And as you see, clear vinyl. And the um, insert here that is, it's like on cardboard, feels like, you know, like a, um, Like a cereal box or the, um, the the cardboard they put in like a shirt when you have it laundered um, and it seems to be more of a screen print than a, it's because it's textured so it feels like a screen print I don't know if it is like I said clear vinyl okay this is also clear it's a dwarves don't need that early stuff this is from the 80s and let me show you what it's a really cool looking thing. Um, first of all, black and white sleeve here. This is like, you know, it's like Xerox art or something. Blown up and pixelated. Now the record itself is very hard to see because it's clear, but what uh, the guy at Black Matter Mastering, Dan is his name, has done is absolutely, it's just fantastic. So let me see if I can let you see it. All right, so what we have are, it's, Groove, there are grooves and there are etchings, and as you can maybe see, the maybe it's easier to see on this side, but what I'm trying to show you is like the grooves and the etchings kind of you can see the etchings and the grooves look like they kind of merge there, don't they? You see that, and all kinds of um, uh, you know, Mexican wrestling mask and all kinds of stuff there. So, how the heck does he do that? How you can play it well. Here's the secret. The secret is that one side, use a visual aid here. So one side's like a seven inch, right? So um, the grooves are, it's only grooved here, right? And then the, the um, etchings, all the different drawings and things are around the outside. Then the flip side, all the grooves are on the outside of the record and it goes to a locked groove halfway through and then the etchings are all in the middle. Does that make sense? So let me show you that again. So you can see, okay, right there, that's the seven inch grooves, and then up here's where the drawing is. And it looks like the etching goes over the grooves, but the truth is that the other side has the other grooves and the other half of the etching. Absolutely, uh, in, it's ingenious. The guys like, um, you know, the Leonardo da Vinci of the uh, of vinyl cutters, and, and that's why we're going to give this one, this year's Golden Gear Award. I realize that some people may not be into the cover art, but in terms of pushing forward the the like the artistic side and the technical side, combining those to make um, just the idea of what a vinyl record could be, pushing that forward, experimenting, this is the one. Way to go, way to go. Now, also have a soft cell 12 inch here, and you can see what looks like an OB here, but it's OB strip, but it's actually a sticker. So I dub the a phobie. Record itself is also clear. And um, like some of the other ones that are coming from uh, the uh, Universal Catalog Department, uh, like the Gloria Gaynor, and uh, you get a nice, they're printed in Europe and they all have these nice um, fancy inner sleeves on them. Here is Frank Zappa. The, uh, this is Lumpy Gravy Primordial, which is uh, when he saw it as like a ballet, just as an instrumental thing before uh, drop, having to uh, put all the shtick in that the uh, uh, record company wanted in there, although uh, that shtick is quite enjoyable. And uh, this has been out on CD before as part of that Lumpy Money collection, but the reason you might want this not only is it a really cool, like, brown vinyl, 
Um, even though we all know that brown shoes don't make it, um, it is a brown, transparent brown with a, a little bit of black marbling. But this is an all analog production here. It didn't have to go through any digital thing according to the sticker on the outside. So that is why you would want this. Well, you might want it anyway if you collect Zappa, but you know, I think if you're a casual Zappa fan, the fact that it's all analog should move it a little higher on your list, which, um, let's talk about the list for a second. Yeah, so the thing about the list is that it's bigger this year than it ever has been before. There are 450 titles, um, although actually um, two got knocked off because they're going to be late, so maybe it's... Well, anyway, still around 450 titles, and there are, in some sense, so that's that's a lot more than we've had before, but it works out well because what's it takes the pressure off everybody involved, I think, for a number of reasons. One is that the um, titles that are everybody knows are going to be tremendously popular, like at least the, the ones from uh, one of the major. Uh, uh, record companies, they decided to really up those quantities to make it easier for people to find them, I guess. So stuff like The Doors, the um, Led Zeppelin, the uh, Bowie, um, there's a whole bunch of things like that that you know or you might be afraid you'd be would be hard to find uh, just because of what they are, but they increase the quantities a lot and that's that's awesome. Also, there's a wider breadth of titles, so there are more of the titles that are like in the 1,500, 1,500 copy pressings. Now, um, the ones that have really low pressing numbers, I don't think they're, uh, it's not like a uh, false scarcity thing that uh, some people think Record Store Day is trying to do or think the labels are trying to do. It, they're just trying to get the right quantity for the right number of people. So uh, what it, it might not be, might it make sense to a label to press 2,000 copies of a record when they know there's probably only 500 people who actually would want to buy it. Uh, but we don't want to, you know, you want to have those in Record Store Day because those, like, they create the, you know, there's some people who only like weird shit and they only want the obscure stuff. So this year there's a ton of stuff for them, um, more than ever. And again, there are so many really cool things that probably nobody could can afford to get everything on their list. So, you know, if you miss one or two, that's fine because there's way more uh, really interesting, all kinds of other stuff to, uh, to all check right. out. Green vinyl here from Soundgarden. This album is called A-Sides and it was released on CD around 1997. Uh, it does include stuff from uh, when they were an indie band before they were signed to a and What we have are, it's a double album, and each pocket has a different insert in it. And the uh, download card just dropped on the floor, but there it is one, and it's just a picture of the uh, front cover on it. Now the records themselves are both different versions of green. So one of them is a translucent green with a black marbling. Same kind of black marbling as like the Zappa before. And then the uh, other one is green with a white marbling. There, there's a knife here. Let me show you this side because there's a lot. You can really see the white marbling here. Pretty cool, huh? Now, there is the Crush Groove soundtrack. This is a 80s hip-hop movie, kind of about the birth of a hip-hop label. And it is on orange and blue, kind of like a, not like a splatter, more of a mixture kind of vinyl. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. This is from Verez Sarah Band, and, but you can see they have a nice uh, 80s, this late 70s, early 80s, Warner Brothers style label. Here's what the back looks like. Also, Orange Jazz Dispensary. It's called Soul Diesel 2. And Soul Diesel 1 was in a box set that they released for Record Store Day a few years ago. 
this is all, let me show you the back. So the Jazz Dispensary um, series, it's more like, uh, uh, you know, they're compilations of kind of, I guess, the big world of soul jazz, but also mixing in some funk as well. Um, and always have fantastic artwork. And this has a really nice light orange with like white marble. And here we are. All right, Tangerine Dream, of course, orange vinyl, right? Zeit is this album. It was their, uh, uh, I think it's the one where their sound really coalesced, where they really got the spacey thing. And um, although you think of them as an electronic band, um, there's a really cool stuff going on with cellos in here. And the uh, vinyl, like I said, orange vinyl, or I guess maybe you should call it Tangerine Vinyl. Now, there are picture discs. The one I wanted to show you, I don't have right, I don't have any of them right now. But, uh, so I wore this, my old Yes sweatshirt to remind everybody that the, uh, there is a picture disc for uh, Tormato, or Tormato, depending on how you pronounce it. And uh, that's the one where it looks like there's a tomato smashed on the cover of it. And it is the last album under the Yes name that had both John Anderson and Rick Wakeman on it. And I believe that there is a Anderson Wakeman Rabin or Anderson Rabin Wakeman or something. I forget what order they put. John's first anyway. Um, they're touring this summer and then the, like, I guess, the, I think the Steve Howe version of Yes is also uh, Steve Howe, Alan White version of Yes. They're touring as well. And um, yeah, you know, this sweatshirt I bought, uh, after the album had come out, several years actually, in the late 80s, or I guess it was late-ish 80s, I was trying to impress a violin player in my high school, and uh, I don't know why I thought she would be impressed by a Yes sweatshirt, um, but um, I doubt it fooled her. She, uh, you know, we knew each other well enough that she would have known what my whole deal was anyway. All right, Purple Vinyl. I only have the CD here to show you though, and, but that's okay because it's a UK only title so I don't have the record, but Re, or maybe your name is pronounced Rye, it's like Rhiannon, but just R-H-I, um, this came out digitally just a little while ago, so you can, you'll be able to buy it on vinyl um, in the UK on Record Store Day. It's purple vinyl, I think translucent or transparent purple vinyl. There is an extra track which is like a remix on there and then it'll be a few weeks later it'll be available in the US I know that the um, the number I saw is 500 copies and I'm not sure if that's the amount that's going to be available later in the US or if that's the total worldwide including um, record store day UK but uh, it's pretty cool it's she's like uh, it, it's she's like ethereal she's got those like ethereal vocals with like a uh, uh, sort of quiet synthy bed but then the uh, drum machines are all really loud so it's almost like a hip-hop like loud like almost like slow hip-hop beats with this layer of kind of like a pillowy feathery mattress and then her vo vocals floating on top interesting interesting stuff um, so yeah if you live in the US you can pre-order it now if you want it I would recommend that and if you live in the UK well hey you know where to go on record store day Red Vinyl Roxanne, right? Of course, got to be Red Vinyl because of the, you know, the light in, mentioned in the song. This is a reproduction, I guess, of how the um, single originally looked when it was released in the UK. And it is die cut. You see that? The, there are the holes. The holes for, um, well, I don't know. Maybe we can put, and that's not a good idea. I just tore it. Anyhow, there are holes here where the, um, you know, look for a rotary phone. And as you see, the, the inside has the same part tinted, tinted blue and the back of the record, the back of the record sleeve has the, uh, the same as the back, except again, different colors. Here's what the inside looks like. And the record itself, transparent red 
with um, the appropriate A&M logo. Planet Terror soundtrack. This is really this is really cool. It's a um, you know more recent movie, but the uh, music really has that uh, you know '70s like action ex exploitation movie kind of sound. Really cool. Um, first time it's been available on vinyl, and um, there are some other of uh, Robert Rodriguez's soundtracks. Uh, that aren't on vinyl either, so maybe we're maybe we're onto something here. Um, hopefully, Perez Saravan keeps going with that white vinyl and a really nice inner sleeve, printed inner sleeve. We got the uh, with, you know stills from the movie and everything. Very nice. Chet Faker. This album has, uh, I, if I remember the story, I do know the story. No, I don't know the story. Chet Faker's debut album, Thinking in Textures, and the cover itself is actually slightly textured. It's, a, it's embossed, um, so the piano keyboard keys are slightly raised here. Scissors on the back, same thing. Don't believe this has been on vinyl before, and it is like this kind of pearly off-white color. Um, it's slightly translucent. It's a really interesting, um, it's actually a really interesting effect. I hope, I hope you uh, get a chance to see it for yourself. Now, Killing Joke, yellow vinyl here. This album was issued on vinyl, um, but it was like 300 copies in Europe or something like that. So, um, almost not available on vinyl. Comes with a poster. Oh, you know, I saw the other day that they have a reunion tour going on right now, or they just announced. The inside, you get some nice text about everything that's going on here. Each of the two records is yellow. Both of the two records are yellow, and they come in, um, you know, not really nice printed sleeves here. Four color, the other one's the same way, same yellow. Um, you know, the same kind of artwork as you see really on the uh, inside. And the last thing I want to mention about it is that Side 4 has two songs that weren't on the CD anyhow. One more reason you might want to look at this thing. Now, of course, there's a lot of free stuff. A lot of free stuff. I already showed you this, this really Print, this print that we're very happy with, but you know, there's lots of all kinds of different things at, at uh, different stores. Let me just show you some of them. There's a record store day uh, pin that a lot of stores are going to have. Uh, there's also one with um, Run the Jewels on it. Of course, they're the official ambassador of record store day in the U.S. this year. You're going to be able to find a lot of CD samplers. This is the uh, Warner one, Warner uh, Reprise and Sire one. There's uh, Derek Small's uh, free download, just information how to get a free download of a non-album track. Um, and there's a lot of these bags that the Warner Music Group uh, made up for, for, for stores and they gave us the option of putting our logo on the back. So uh, if you go to multiple stores this year, um, you know, maybe you can get your record shopping bags with, with multiple different uh, store logos on them. Felt like this would be better showing off like this. It's the Grateful Dead uh, Fillmore West box set. There's the uh, track listing right here on the back. 9,000. Okay, lift the top off. Black in there. Okay, we have a like a four page essay about the whole thing. Pictures, all this really nice labels. Oh, let's see something in a second here. I want to show you what the label looks like. As you can see, black vinyl. If you were to look closely, you would see the uh, CB initials in there. Not mine, of course. Chris Bellman from Bernie Grunman cut these. And I want to show you this, because if you notice this, we only only goes up to side seven in Cosmic Charlie, you see it's pretty short. So let's see what's going on here. Oh, huh, that's weird. Look, side eight's blank. 
no label. Hmm. Well, I know what's on here anyway, but you can probably guess there is an etching. And I'm going to see if, hey, there's me. There's the everything. All right, can we get, I'm going to try to use the glare there to, so you can kind of see, kind of see what we got here. It's, um, Sort of an just a, it's a, like an expanded version of those roses, that rose image there. Nice job on that. That's not signed. I don't know if Mr. Bellman did that one himself or no. All right. Well, hey, there's also Wilco. This is uh, as you see, it's uh, this was originally a promo release as a promo only cassette to release to radio stations around the time of um, Wilco's second album. And it is on the um, deluxe five CD version of the Being There uh, reissue that came out last November. This looks to me like that must be the uh, reproduction of the cassette uh, insert. Ticket stub. This is uh, similar to the information uh, that's in the CD if you have it. Um, mastered by here in Portland by Bob Ludwig, who does really you know most of Wilco's stuff, or maybe all of it, I think. And again, Chris Bellman. So that's exciting. Let's look at the records here. Um, nice plain label, reverse colors there. And uh, if you're not familiar with the set, you know obviously it's mostly stuff in the first couple Wilco albums, but we've also got uh, a couple nice songs from. Um, Anodyne, which is my favorite Uncle Tupelo album, probably one of my favorite albums, period. Okay, what is the story with this? See, this is Prince 1999, which most people know as a double album, but in some countries there was a one LP version that came out with only seven tracks. And, uh, uh, you know, fortunately, got an RTI. And this eye image here on the label, let me take it out of the sleeve. That eye image it was not on the original record. That was uh, just a special special thing for us for this reissue. In case you're cur curious, which seven songs? It's just, you know, it's seven songs that were on the regular album. So it's just a cool way of hearing it. Just a, a you know, it's a cool, um, just a cool collectible. And if you want to take a look right here, 13,000 copies worldwide. That's uh, uh, what I was saying earlier about the, or maybe it was later, uh, about the uh, larger pressing sizes for a lot of the things that the Warner Music Group's put out. Uh, that is intentional, and I believe the point is to uh, make it easier for people to find what they are looking for. Good idea, folks. Here we have the uh, Cheech and Chong Up in Smoke 7-inch picture disc, and I'll show it to you in a second. First, I want to point out here, there's a little scratch and sniff thing here. It smells kind of like uh, patchouli oil. If you've ever been around somebody who um, wore that, um, you, well, you know what, I'm, you know what I mean. Uh, it's got the uh, regular version of Up in Smoke from the movie, and then there's also uh, this extra version with um, Cheech singing in Spanish uh, for one verse, and uh, it goes along with the box set that uh, Rhino has this spring, a big up in smoke box set. And uh, here's what the record looks like. It looks like a, uh, it's like a fern of some kind or uh, like a Japanese maple leaf. All right, seven inch speed round, sock tight. That's a Mike Watt project. Chris Bell, gatefold. Eka Mouse with a nice, uh, here's what the back looks like. I like the cover there. Okay, this is cool. Mac DeMarco and Shamir. There's another Mac DeMarco record I'll be showing you. Another point in the video, but this, they're, uh, each of them, it's a split seven inch, they're not performing together, but they're each covering a different beat happening song. And uh, there's a note here about the Immigrant Defense Project on the back. We got a Saxon Clear 7-inch Descendants. This is their new single. And there's a couple other new songs you haven't heard before. Trojan 10 7-inch box set. All uh, more of the Rocksteady style. Motorhead picture disc. Coltrane. John Coltrane. And I think this was in the... Uh, it was like a bonus in the box set or something like that. Anyhow, 
There's uh, uh, it's mono was a big hit. Okay, we got a side by side record here. Not as many as we usually get. Both two different versions of Dismantle Me. One by the Distillers, which is the original, and then the Regrets. We have a new thing coming out as well. Uh, that's uh, uh, yeah. Anyhow, up. Oh. New music from the Flaming Lips. Here we have two new songs. One's about beer and one is uh, all cutesy sounding. The story of Yum Yum and Dragon. This is the big one. Probably the, the biggest one this side predict will be the top selling item. This record store day. Led Zeppelin, Rock and Roll and Friends. Two different uh, mixes than the ones you're used to. And uh, according to uh, Mick, this is, I believe, the, what did he say, the second most 90s song of all time, uh, Sugar Ray, Fly. Trampled by Turtles, covering the Tom Petty song, Wildflowers. Black Moth, Super Rainbow, which is Mike Watt and Flea. New 10 inch by the band Belly. Albert. Hammond from uh, the guy from the Strokes and it's an etching and I'm just gonna fiddle with this slowly so maybe you can see what it's an etching of and all right snarky puppy shark attack 10 inch okay right on now is a you see it's a northern soul compilation first track is uh, by Betty Levette and uh, then you got I can see the Turner on here a lot of this music is uh, super collectible, goes for big bucks on, uh, if you can find an original 45, but fortunately ORG has uh, collected a bunch for us. Uh, you can use the count on them to do a nice job sound-wise. Check that out. Got three picture discs from Noise Records. This one is um, Celtic Frost, which, uh, there we are. Totally glary, and uh, there is a little bit of picture on the back. The other two, Creator and uh, Voivod uh, have just black on the back. There's a soundtrack to a late 80s skateboard movie. It's called The Search for Animal Chin. And I guess this was the first movie that had an uh, uh, actual plot to it in the skateboard world. We got some another volume of Blue Oyster Cult rarities. I remember volume one when it came out last year sold a lot better than uh, I thought it might. So, uh, have fun with this, and uh, our uh, local guy Stephen King, you may have heard of him, he's a horror writer, uh, he's, um, he's on, on there. Ornette Coleman, An Evening with Ornette Coleman, um, it's from 1965, and this is another ORG release, so that's going to be awesome. Um, they got some Sun Ra from ORG to show you later on. Thomas Andrew Doyle, who, uh, if you haven't heard of him, you may have heard of his band, Tad. Well, this is some kind of symphonic thing that he did, uh, or has done, and um, gonna be interesting, gonna be interesting. Dr. Dre, this is the first single from The Chronic, and there are some non-album tracks on here that were not on the main album. Key piece of uh, uh, musical history right there, Duran Duran. Live at Budokan, here we go. Okay, picture disc, John Fogarty, center field. Now, why, uh, uh, you know, because there's a... Uh, it's being reissued, that's why the whole album is being reissued. That's what it is. Okay, the Smithereens doing Tommy. Now, they don't do the whole album, uh, but the CD of this is awesome. If you, uh, it's the kind of thing, if you think you'd like it, you would, and it's not that thick, I just have two stuck together. Uriah Heap, look at yourself. This is on like that mirror board, mirror poster board, whatever it's called, and uh, Ben Osibisa guests on here. Finally, from this pile anyway, John Wesley Harding, this is a covers album. Uh, if you miss the vinyl on Record Store Day, don't sweat it. Well, I mean, because there is a CD of this coming out in May, and it's John Wesley Harding with guests. Um, 
covering stuff, but he's, there's some interesting choices. Like there's actually a song by the Straubs, the, the Benedictus, the first song on Great New World, um, and uh, which is probably the peak of their prog era, maybe. And there's also, uh, he does Walk on the Highway from the River, and Springsteen guests on his own song. And if you know the person who produced this, um, you know that this is getting Springsteen on the record is probably pretty exciting, pretty exciting for her. Well, we know that. We know that. Yes, we do. Well, you don't. Yeah. Hi, Cheryl. Here's a nice box set of three albums by the Casket Lottery. Got the, uh, even got a download for the whole thing, and it's a nice, uh, nice heavy slip, uh, slip cover uh, thing. Some Eric Clapton stuff here. We got the soundtrack to Rush, which is track list, and, uh, that's a song of note. Also, we have a four-record set called The Complete Clapton. Um, and it uh, sort of runs from, just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good compilation, really. It's not, you know, complete, because how could you fit it all in here? But, it, you know, you get, starts with, uh, here you got some Cream, Blind Faith, Derek and the Dominoes, and like, you know, a bunch of his hits. You know, I Shot the Sheriff, Knocking on Heaven's Door. You know, cocaine and it, like all the all the songs you know all the way up through the uh, that album he did with J.J. Uh, Kale. Now, be on the lookout for these and don't let yourself get confused because there are two very similar looking Cure picture discs, and it's uh, uh, one is mixed up and the other one is uh, mixed up, torn down, mixed up extras. I forget what the difference between these two are because I was not into the cure at the time, but they're all newly remastered and you know they're just uh, remixes. That, um, yeah, anyhow. Um, another picture disc, the Enter the Dragon Bruce Lee movie soundtrack. That's what the back looks like. Dream Syndicate 12 inch. Another, uh, here's a Mastodon picture disc. It seems like we often have something from Mastodon for uh, for Record Store Day. It's time for Billy Breathes to be out for Record Store Day. And they are numbered. That's the Fish album, of course. And this looks interesting. It's, um, you know, because Omnivore has another interesting thing here. Linda Perhax. Perhax? Perhaps. Perhaps. I don't know how to say her name. Uh, but you've got, if you look on the back, she's got a ton of guest stars here, including four members of Wilco. And also, I saw um, somebody else who was really interested. Oh, Devendra Banhart's on here, Michelle Vidal. So, uh, looks like a really, really cool album. Um, Quicksand, here we are. Epitaph Band's an EP, Lou Reed's live album, and Animal Serenade. It takes three records to fit this. Dave Van Ronk, interesting uh, folk guy, bigger than. Uh, uh, you know, who kind of um, was bigger than Dylan when they first started out. He got to start first, but obviously, uh, you know, he's more of a covers dude. He never didn't write a lot at all, but yeah. um, anyhow, this is a concert from 1967. Another thing where you, similar covers where it's going to be easy to get mixed up is uh, the top, you know, so Tom Waits did this triple CD uh, about 10, 15 years ago called Orphans. And uh, just, you know, an outtake, scraps thing, but a lot of really awesome stuff. So the covers are similar, and I only can find two out of the three of them. But uh, there's Ballers, and there's Brawlers, and there's Brawlers. Bastards, Ballers, and Brawlers are the three. I got two of them here. They look the same, so you're just going to have to, um, you're going to want them all. I mean, I think if you want one, you probably want all three. So careful with those. Record Store Day ambassadors for this year. Run the Jewels have this cool box. It's actually metal, and it the uh, hand symbols are embossed. Inside it has a 12-inch of uh, the song that was in uh, like a Marvel movie recently, and another song off of Run the Jewels 3, and there is a slip mat, and a sticker and room so you can put your entire Run the Jewels collection inside this box for safekeeping. Chris Robinson Brotherhood also has a box set this year and this is a live album and as you can see it's made up to look like a real recording tape.
Got the alarm remixes. There are actually, uh, we're in the middle of an alarm reissue campaign right now. Dickie Betts double live album doing, uh, let's see, oh, let me just tell you who's on here. So look, you can see it's like, um, uh, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, government mule guys who were in the uh, almonds as well. And uh, it's uh, Almond Brothers songs mostly, songs that he did for the band. Black Rock, this is like an old funk, old funk. Okay, John Carter Cash, this is stuff he's been working on for uh, the last like 10 years with lots of uh, Nashville special guests and uh, also available on CD on Record Store Day. More country, here's an Eric Church piece. Okay, from Prague, picture disc by Curved Air, which uh, I think the original release was supposedly a picture disc. And uh, this band is sort of a little asterisk in police history because supposedly, I don't know if this is true, um, Stuart Copeland was in the band uh, before he went off to join the police, but he's been on this record. This is their first album, very proggy, and uh, well, you know, it's a good, it's a good, it's, it's it's a good, like, you know, second level prog album. I enjoy it. I like, but you know, there aren't a lot of prog records I don't like. There's no band. Here's some, a uh, uh, bunch of jazz guys doing stuff. There's a um, regular, this is the vinyl, but there's a regular CD, just normal. And um, there, it's the album's called Hudson, because they all live in the uh, Woodstock area, Hudson Valley, and uh, original compositions, but there's also stuff on here associated with Dylan. There's the uh, Johnny Mitchell's song Woodstock they do on here uh, a couple of Hendrix tunes up on Cripple Creek by the band of course all associated with that area Dr. Octagon I think these are instrumental versions of the newest album Flamin' Groovies and Jerry Garcia Run for the Roses Here's the back, plenty of dead. There's a Mickey Hart I'm going to show you soon. There's a dead uh, box set I showed you earlier. I'll try to keep these in alphabetical order for now. Marvin Gaye, let's get it on. Red vinyl, regular album. Robert Glasper, here's the back. Okay, Government Mule. There we are. As I mentioned before, a couple of the guys are on the um, Mickey Betts album. There are two Grant Green releases coming out and they are both super super heavy um, they are both coming from resonance records and uh, their stuff tends to sell out on record store day so if you i uh, wouldn't that's not a good one to let sit told you we had mickey hart here it is bert yansh british folk guy um, they are breaking up the most recent box set so uh, nothing here that you need if you bought that box set last year, but if you didn't, you can get this album separately. Elton John versus Panow, which is them remixing a bunch of his songs to create new songs. They're Australian. Jungle Rot album has been remixed. Michael Kiwanuka, bunch of uh, live stuff. EP, Ben Queller. Getting a lot of people asking about here's what he looks like from the back. All right, Arthur Lee and Love, a bunch of different things. This is, uh, uh, I think, highlights from like a box set or a, um, a multi-disc set. It may not be in a box, I don't recall. All right, some reggae from 1984, the Maytones. Nice and heavy package there, all the single record. The Naz, this is... Uh, um, Double album, um, like an unreleased, unreleased album. How about Patton Oswalt? Some nice uh, spoken word comedy there. Popol Vuh, uh, space, space Rock. This is from the 90s, so it's never been on vinyl before. Mike Posner with the longest album title of uh, Record Store Day this year. I was born in Detroit on a very, 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 very cold cover. Poultry. There's some stones. There's Satanic Majesty's Request and it is the uh, replica of the uh, 
we call that um, lenticular cover. It's supposed to be looking like it's moving a little bit. Hopefully you're getting that. Here's the back. It's got the uh, OV strips. All right, scatolites. Obviously that's some ska. Back looks like great glare today, huh? Yeah. Sunvolt, never been on vinyl before. And check out the track list here. You can see side four and part of side three has not been released before. We have two of the three Taylor Swift albums that are being reissued on Record Store Day. The other one is late. And they are hand numbered. Tad. All right, this is like two different sessions, a live one and a studio one on the same record. And uh, there is also T the guy, Tad, that's his initials. He's got some kind of orchestral project or something also coming out. Johnny Thunder's album. There's a U2 12-inch. And uh, besides the fact that it's a U2, the interesting audio here is uh, um, the uh, Beck remix. Don't think that's available anywhere else. The Kids Are All Right soundtrack by The Who. From the, obviously, this has uh, been on vinyl before, but uh, this is it now. And um, different versions of the songs than uh, you may have heard if you've never heard that before. Here's a Johnny Winter reissue. And this is interesting. Um, a bunch of uh, things from the Monterey Pop Festival. Uh, and here, I'll just let you, you can just pause it there if you want to see what's on it or who's on it. All right, Let, let's, we're going to do more various artists and soundtracks right here. Here is Ennio uh, Morricone's soundtrack to Autopsy. Always uh, great, great artwork there. Various artists, country stuff here. We've got the beginning of the end. This is, uh, love the title, The Existential Psychodrama in Country Music from uh, 1956 to 1972 and similar record part, part of the Hillbillies in Hell right series this one we've got um, these are all a lot of songs about the devil and Satan and going to hell and all that stuff again pretty out there the uh, I've got Hans Zimmer Hans Zimmer soundtrack to the Blue Planet are okay all right, here's a SIP soundtrack to the uh, uh, like a Kung Fu crime movie. That's not Kung Fu, martial arts. Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance. And uh, there are also two other, the two other films in this series. They call it the Vengeance series. And uh, their soundtracks are also coming out on Record Store Day. Uh, probably going to be a little hard to find because they're uh, you know, small quantities. Here is a soul compilation that was... Um, uh, actually, RSD helped to curate it. That's not why we have that note on there, though. Daughter did the soundtrack to the video game uh, Before the Storm, and uh, there's no CD planned for that. All right, we got a seven inch bonus round here Fleet Foxes. More records. More t Tim Armstrong, punk rock. Okay, this is going to take some explaining anywhere. This is their second album, and they are, it's uh, like really a Mars Volta side project. A couple guys from Mars Volta decided to get weird and found a whole bunch of other people to get even weirder with, people like, like Mike Watt. Okay, a whole bunch of David Bowie stuff for Record Store Day. Uh, there is the... Uh, there's Let's Dance, we've got this. This has the uh, demo version of it and a live version of the song. There is a live album, three LPs, Bowie Now, which is a reproduction of a promo-only album that was sent out, um, and it's got alternating tracks from Heroes and Low. Not Here also is there the uh, album that a uh, bunch of stuff that he recorded before Space Oddity and that's all his like hippie stuff like the Laughing Gnome and Please Mr. Grave Digger and um, Love You Till Tuesday good stuff on there uh, but not nothing like this all right we got the Miles Davis Rubber Band EP okay uh, 
Mac DeMarco. Here we are, and he's also on a uh, split seven inch. Here's the back, in case you want to see it. Okay, Dr. Dre. This is the Dre Day seven, uh, 12 inch, but it's got a bunch of stuff that was not on the chronic. Things you need. Europe, picture disc. Carl Jenkins, the, the Armed Man, A Mass for Peace. This is a classical release with a uh, big choir, and it's uh, sort of based on like uh, a funeral mass, but uh, you've also got a bunch of other uh, original um, uh, original lyrics in there as well. So anyway, uh, we got a Hawkwind compilation, 70s material. Jethro Tall Moths 10-inch. As you can see, this is a uh, uh, Green to remind us of the um, Heavy Horses album that was uh, recently remixed, and there's surround sound, and there's a vinyl remaster too. Okay, Bunk Johnson, who is a, a jazz trumpet player from the early, early days of jazz, bunch of unreleased stuff from the 1940s here, although his career goes back to the teens, probably earlier. A couple of Madonna things. This is the, her uh, fir first album, you know, with uh, Lucky Stars and all that. Um, but this is like a Japanese version of it. You see it's a picture disc, so it's, uh, you know, um, the Japanese cover. Got a nice uh, lyric sheet on the back there. There's also um, like a reproduction of a 12-inch from the uh, late 80s. A lot of people excited about this, including um, at least one, hey, you know who you are. The National Boxer. Adam Sandler. Hey, they're all going to laugh at you. And uh, the guy's written the second amount of code, probably of anybody in that we've got here working on our computers. Big Adam Sandler fan. And uh, Tim, I know you're not watching this, but I'm mentioning you anyway. Here we have a Stooges compilation, which is... Uh, was you know curated by uh, Ben from uh, Third Man, and uh, cool thing is you've got the double record set. Once one record is um, you know stuff you'd expect like I want to be your dog and no fun, uh, but then you also have alternate versions of everything on the first record or on the second record. All right, the streets. This is a remix and B-side collection. Um, there are some Streets albums that are supposedly being reissued on vinyl, but that's like uh, only in the UK as far as we know so far. Sun Ra standards. There are, I believe, four Sun Ra albums being issued on Record Store Day, so that puts him up there with David Bowie for the most amount of stuff uh, coming, unless you want to count something like um, the uh, dead box set, because I think that's four and a half sides worth of music. Here's a white snake picture disc for all you bad boys out there. Speaking of picture discs, yes, Tormato or Tormato, front and back covers of the album, and uh, it, you know, it, even my cassette looks like there's looks like there's a tomato sort of smashed on it. Here we have Neil Young, Tonight's The Night Live, double album, that one. A couple um, picture disc sets of things from the more recent, uh, you know, the, the Twin Peaks uh, uh, third season reboot, whatever you want to call it. Let's see if these, these are sealed shut. There are two picture discs in each one, and I don't want to break the seal to show you what uh, what we have on the inside, so I'll just show you the fronts and the backs. And lastly, Sun Records compilation, like we've had several of. Here's another one where uh, people who work at record stores vote on what tracks they want, and I'll give you the back here so you can see what people who work at record stores think you might want to enjoy listening to from the Sun Records catalog. And I think that's it. But I'm sure that, uh, you know, maybe the, you know more stuff will show up and maybe there'll be another little supplemental video within the next couple of days. If not, you know, I like to talk about records anyway, so there'll be more uh, 
you know, I'll be a week or two more record time with Chris videos. But for now, thank you for watching. Thank you for everything you do to make Record Store Day and, of course, Record Stores exist. Have a good one, everybody. And until my next video, I hope you are listening to something awesome.